Hey everybody, it's Courtney. I'm here with another project for Not Too Shabby. Today I'm going to be using one of the newer stamp sets, Yay Lemonade, to create kind of a simple but fun card. I am working on the watercolor mat by Waffle Flower and I'm going to be taking some Distress Oxide inks here and kind of just smushing those down. I'm using Worn Lipstick, Picked Raspberry, and Squeeze Lemonade of course. And then I'm going to take a piece of Canton watercolor paper, and this is cut down to an A2 size card. I'm going to spritz this with water and then just lay my card panel down and kind of just pick up some of that pigment. And then you can see that when I pick it up, there's certain areas that I want a little bit more color on. So I'll just dab that back onto that mat a few times until I'm happy with the coverage. And then I'll put that aside to dry. Now you can clean this mat with just a microfiber towel, just wet and you just kind of wipe everything up. It, you may have some staining if you use a really dark color, but I haven't had that problem yet. So next we're going to move on to the stamping and coloring. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp out my images with Blackout Ink by Ink on 3. My acrylic block there was a little bit wobbly. I had a piece of, teeny tiny piece of foam tape stuck to the back of it because that's my life. I seem to have foam tape or sequins everywhere and I drag it everywhere to the grocery store to everywhere. <laughs> so I'm stamping these out on a piece of Nina Solar White 80 pound cardstock because of course we are going to be doing some Copic coloring. So I'm going to stick to the colors that we used in the background, mainly pinks and yellows. So I'm starting off with this little mason jar full of lemonade. So I'm going to make this appear as if there's lemonade inside. So I'm starting off with my lightest color, which is a really, really bright yellow. And I'm just getting my paper saturated so that my blending will be a little bit easier. Now the mason jar is a round object, so I'm going to be doing some shading on either side of the jar. And then we'll add some highlights later on with a white gel pen. I'm going in with a YR marker as my darkest color, then blending that out a little bit with the Y38, then the Y35. And most of this will be the highlight color, which is usually the opposite of the way I color but I wanted to make this really bright yellow. So going to blend all of that out, then I realized the little stars inside of the mason jar, I'm going to color those yellow as well. I'm gonna have the same color combination for those, but I am going to skip the darkest color for this. I'm gonna leave out that YR marker and just do a little bit of shading with the Y38 and the Y35, and we'll add some sparkle to this later on. For the rest of the jar, I want this to appear to be clear. So I'm just going to bring in the what I'm sorry, the C3 and the C1 just to add a little bit of shading to either side of the clear part of the jar and then kind of just fade that off to white. For that little tag or label or whatever is on the straw there. I'm going to switch over to the pink combination that I'm going to be using. I'm just using a teeny tiny bit of that RV29, which is the darkest color. It's almost a red, so I want to use that really sparingly. This is one of those scary darks that I talk about. It does give you a ton of contrast, but you do want to make sure that you use it sparingly. For the straw itself, I'm going to make this pink and white stripes, so I'm just adding a little tiny bit of shading so this still makes it look like a round object. So I'm gonna go right in with my darkest color because this is such a teeny tiny area and do the same thing with the C3 and C1 as well just to make this appear to be white. So next we'll move on to the little lemonade stand here and I'm gonna bring out that those RV20 markers which I think is probably my favorite pink combination at the moment. It's fairly new to me, but I love it. So I'm going in with my lightest color to map out those darkest areas. For the bottom part, I'm just adding a little bit of shading to the left-hand side of each one of those little boards, I guess they would be. And I was initially gonna have a light source be in the top right, but I decided being this isn't a scene or anything, I'm just gonna stick to a center highlight. So I'm gonna put shading on either side of the little table and the little sign up there, or what would normally be the sign. And then I'm gonna go in with that RV29, and this is that scary dark. So I'm just using the tip of my marker, and you can tell 
by the fact that my marker is almost straight up and down. So I'm just putting a teeny tiny line on each of those or on the left hand side of each one of those little boards and just adding a little bit of shading to this little table here, just making it a little bit darker the further, the further back it is. Putting a little shading on either side on top and bottom of those little, I don't know, poles, I guess, that would be hanging up or holding up that little sign, adding a shadow underneath the little stars, and then again on either side of the top portion there. And next I'll go in with the RV25, and I'm gonna start extending these areas out a little bit further. Now, I'm not going too far because this is still a pretty dark pink, so I'm using my dark darkest mid-tone pretty sparingly as well. Not, I'm adding a little bit more than I did with the darkest color, but I'm gonna make... My main color is going to be the RV23, which is my lightest mid-tone. Extending that shadow out underneath those little stars there, and then again on either side. Next, I'll bring in that RV23, and I'm going to extend these areas out pretty far now. And I'm just going to leave a very small area for that RV21, which will be my highlight color. And for the tabletop there, I guess it would be called. I'm going to continue to add my shading mostly to the back part and just leave the highlight towards this uh, in the center but towards the front of that little table. That would be where the light would hit the most of and then just leaving a small highlight in the center part of the top portion of the little lemonade stand for that RV21. Now I didn't bother to fill in the little cheat colors for this little I guess it would be a little character because I'm already coloring this pink. So I'm just going to kind of bypass that and skip that. For the stars, the remainder of the stars, I am going to use that same yellow combination that I did for the lemonade. And I had to use a little bit of my colorless blender on the ones on the lemonade stand. So I'm just going to let that sit for a minute and let that completely dry. If I go right in with my color while that's still wet, it's going to start spreading in areas that I don't necessarily want it to. So I'm just adding a little bit of shading to the base of each of these stars and then blending that out each time, finally finishing off and starting with that Y04, which is that really, really bright yellow. And I did color the two stars that are on top of the lemonade stand the same way once that colorless blender was dry. For the lemon slices here, I am again using the same color combination, going to start off by getting my paper saturated with that bright Y04. Then I'm just going to add a little bit of shading with those same colors in the like towards the center of the lemon slice there and kind of working my way out. Now on the outer edge, or I guess it would be the peel of the lemon. I'm kind of just adding shading wherever I want. There's really no rhyme or reason for it. <laughs> I just added a little bit of that Y38 on either side and then blended that out with the Y35 and then finished back off with that Y04. Now for the little area between the peel and the actual lemon part, I guess, I don't know what this is called. Again, I should Google these things, but I'm just gonna fill that in solid and I didn't really like it. It wasn't bright enough for me. I wanted to keep these colors really bright. So I'm going to go over again the entire thing with the Y04 to kind of just brighten that up a little bit. So once all of my coloring was done, I'm going to go ahead and fussy cut out all of my images. I did use a craft knife to cut out that center portion of the little lemonade stand so that that wasn't left white and that you could actually see through it. And I am leaving a very small white border around all of the images. Once all my fussy cutting was done, I'm going to go ahead and take my panel here that we use the watercolor. I'm going to sprinkle on some clean water, dab that up with a paper towel. Then I'm going to take some shimmer spray and I'm going to shake this up really, really good and just take the nozzle or the little tube or whatever that's in there and sprinkle on some of that. Let that sit for about 20 seconds or so and then dab that up again. Next, I'm going to take a scalloped stitched rectangle die, and this is by MFT, and I'm just going to run this through my Gemini, and then I'm going to kind of place my little images down to kind of see how I want these. This isn't going to be a neat card. This is kind of different from what I typically make. I'm just going to kind of scatter these around to see where I'm going to want my sentiment, and I want these 
some of these images to kind of hang off my main panel. And then I really wasn't left with a whole lot of room. So my sentiment is just gonna be there, right there in the center on the top. Now being this is watercolor paper, it is a textured cardstock. So I wanna make sure that I get a really good impression with my sentiment. So I'm gonna bring out my Misty. This is not a requirement. You can certainly use an acrylic block. I'm gonna go ahead and line up my sentiment. Then I will stamp this down with VersaFi and Onyx Black Ink which typically will give you a really crisp image. I actually got a pretty good impression the first time, but I did end up stamping this twice just to make sure that it was a very bold black image, kind of going in between those little textured areas within the card, or the card stack, I should say. Once that's down, once that's done, I will go ahead and just assemble this card. And like I said, this is gonna be really nice and simple. I have a white A2 size note card. I am gluing down the main panel flat with some liquid adhesive. This is the Tombow Mono Multi Glue. And you kind of have to hold this down a little bit regardless of the adhesive that you use because the paper is going to be a little bit warped just because the, of the amount of water that we used. Once that was done, I'm going to take some Scotch foam tape and I'm going to adhere this to the back of all of my images, including those little teeny tiny areas where the stars are and that little straw to make sure that this doesn't come up when I'm putting it in an envelope or when it's being taken out of an envelope. I'll go ahead and remove the backing of my foam tape and I'm gonna kind of scatter these around trying to remember the way that I had them to begin with um, when we kind of laid everything out. It wasn't exactly the same, but it's close enough. So once they were all down, I wanted to add a whole lot of shimmer. We have a little bit of shimmer in the background from that shimmer spray, but I took a Spectrum Noir. No, actually, I lie. First, I took my white gel pen to add some white gel pen details. I added some reflections to certain objects. I also fixed up some coloring errors that I had there, especially with the pink. I didn't want to use my colorless blender on that darker pink area. And I also added little teeny tiny dots to the inside of the little lemon slices here. And this will kind of just make it appear as if there's some texture within these. Once that's done now, I will take my Spectrum Noir Sparkle Pen to add some shimmer to mainly the stars. And I included the stars that are actually in the lemonade as well. Then I decided that's not enough sparkle for me. <laughs> <laughs> for this card being it's so bright and cheery. So I'm going to bring out my Nouveau glitter drops here and these are clear. So I'm just going to take the nozzle basically and I'm going to fill in my little stars and I'm using the little nozzle there to kind of spread that out. Now this is going to give you some texture but it's going to dry clear and very very shimmery. I also added a few of drops around the sentiment as well, just a couple on either side to add just a little bit more sparkle to the background. And that is it. That is the card for today, guys. Thanks a lot for stopping by. All the supplies will be listed below as well as that discount code for the Not Too Shabby Shop. Thanks, guys. Bye.